Dark Souls is a game that tells its story through metaphors. And when you tell a story through metaphors, you often end up telling more than a single story. It's not uncommon for a story to mean several things at once. This situation, I think, is most clear with Dark Souls 3, where I believe not only did this happen, but it happened by design, by the developer's intent. Dark Souls 3 is about the story it presents, a simple tale of fire and dark. It is also, however, a story of what those things represent, the metaphorical meanings of fire and dark, and the overarching theme that those metaphors are in service to. Finally, it has one other meaning. One, I think, is just as deliberately crafted as the other two. Dark Souls 3 is a story about itself, about itself as a video game, about Dark Souls as a video game series, and about its creator and creative director, Hidetaka Miyazaki. This third interpretation is what this video will focus on. Let's go ahead and get started. As a whole, Dark Souls 3 is a metaphor for the end of the Dark Souls series. For some, this insight might seem obvious, hardly worth repeating, but it provides important context for the rest of the video, so I really need to hammer this point home. And to do that, we need to understand the proper context surrounding Dark Souls 3's development and the director's feelings on the series. You see, Miyazaki doesn't want to make any more Dark Souls games. He's quite simply done with them. The following is from an interview before Dark Souls 3's release. Miyazaki was asked if he thought people may become overexposed with the franchise. I quote, It'd be a lie if I said I have no concerns about that. I don't think it'd be the right choice to continue indefinitely creating Souls and Bloodborne games. I'm considering Dark Souls 3 to be the big closure on the series. That's not just limited to me, but from software and myself together want to aggressively make new things in the future. Later in the interview he states, I don't care what type of president I will be in the future, or how I will be remembered. I just believe that moving on is necessary in order for players to continue enjoying our games. We have to keep creating quality games and be aggressive about doing new things." End quote. In a different interview, Miyazaki made his feelings on the matter even more clear. He stated that they never wanted From Software to be a Dark Souls only company. He also said that there's nothing wrong with making new games in the same series if you think that there is more to add to it, and that the reason he's no longer going to work on Dark Souls is that he doesn't think he can add anything of value to it. To summarize, Hidetaka is worried about the oversaturation of Dark Souls games, and doesn't think it's right to continue making them until people get sick of the series. He doesn't want From Software or himself to be tied to this one IP. He wants the creative freedom that comes from a blank canvas, the freedom to create things not tied to a series' history. He feels there's nothing he can add to Dark Souls, that it is as complete as he is capable of making it. Now, with all of that said, let me finally get to my point. In Dark Souls, the painted worlds are metaphors for From Software games. Specifically, the painted world of Ariandel represents the Dark Souls series as a whole. The painted worlds are made specifically to be a refuge from the outside world, a cold, dark, and gentle home for the Forlorn. The Forlorn in this situation are you, the player. See, they even kind of look like you. The rot that plagues Ariandel is a metaphor for the desire to continue the Dark Souls series indefinitely. Be forewarned, eager Ash. Should this world wither and rot, even then would Ariandel remain our home. Sister Fride and Father Ariandel represent the choice to cling to the Souls games regardless of the oversaturation of the franchise or the lack of new ideas. Fire, on the other hand, is the decision to end the series in its prime, before it becomes a shadow of its former self. Please, grant us one wish. Make the tales true, and burn this world away. Oh, please, it must be you. I am so terribly frightened of timidly rotting away, like those... like those fools on the outside. The fools on the outside that the Corvian holds in great contempt are the people outside the painting, who link the first flame in an endless attempt to keep it from fading. He doesn't want to be like them. He doesn't want to keep milking this franchise long after it stopped having anything meaningful to say. My thank you. 
I can hear the crackling from here, the sound of my home, the painting of Ariandel burning away. When the world rots, we set it afire for the sake of the next world. It's the one thing we do right, unlike those fools on the outside. For the sake of the next world, the rotting world must be set aflame. That is to say, for the sake of From Software's future projects, Dark Souls must be allowed to die. Which brings me finally to the painter. A painting, like a video game, is a creative manifestation of artistic vision. The painter endeavors to create a new painted world. This new world is a blank canvas, free of the old world's lore and accumulated history. Even the current painted world is not original. Ariandel is described as the restorer of the painting, implying that this is still the same painted world of Ariamis from Dark Souls 1. But this painter is not restoring anything. The painted world she creates will be new. It is symbolic of From Software's endeavors going forward, and maybe even Elden Ring specifically. Development of Elden Ring began right after the Ring City DLC, after all. The painter is Miyazaki himself, determined to create a new world. But to that end, the painter needs two very important ingredients. Thou hast a pact made with Uncle Gale, so I wish to tell thee all. Behold its size. This is my canvas. It's to be a cold, dark, and very gentle place. But first, I must see flame. Those who aren't kin to fire cannot paint a world. Those absorbed by fire must not paint a world. My thanks, Ashen One. I can almost see the flame. Soon, Uncle Gale will bring me the pigment. I wonder if he has found it. The dark soul of man. The painter is taking the most important elements of this world and using them as the material to craft another. Fire and the dark soul. The painter must see fire so that she can understand it, but remain careful that she does not become obsessed. And the dark soul of man is the very pigment that will color the new painting. The DLCs together depict the true end of Dark Souls as a series. The painter and her work are metaphorical. They are meant to show that although this is the end of Dark Souls, its essence will survive. What is dying is only the rot born of the series' lore and accumulated history. Its best elements, its fire and its blood, will live on in a new form. My thanks, Ashen One. I will finish the painting of a cold, dark, and very gentle place, so that it might make a home for someone someday.